Hey guys, let me preface this video by saying unless this video does extremely popular for some reason, I don't plan on reviewing every episode of this series. In fact, I didn't even know what this series was until a bunch of videos on it popped up on my recommended. And yeah, when I saw reviews for it were this bad, I decided that I should check it out. So I did some quick research on it and I'll provide some basic background info on High Guardian Spice because I am assuming most of my fanbase is not familiar with this show. So if you want to get straight into the episode review, please skip to the time indicated on screen. Alright, High Guardian Spice is the first anime produced by Crunchyroll, a platform that streams a bunch of animes and was apparently supposed to be released all the way back in 2019, but somehow kept getting delayed until 2021. I didn't know what the delays were for though, cause according to these critic reviews, they didn't fix anything. The story is about two girls named Rosemary and Sage, who are going to a magic academy named Guardian High or something like that, I really forgot and I don't think it's worth me looking up. We do not care. So that's pretty much all the background info you need. What did I think of the first episode? Is it really as bad as the critic reviews are saying? Well, let's find out. So we start off with this warning from Crunchyroll about graphic violence in language. But trust me, there is literally no blood, no cussing, nothing like that. And this episode could air on Cartoon Network or Disney Channel without any modifications. I have a lot more to say about that at the end of the review, but just keep it in mind for now. Sage and Rosemary talk about how this is the biggest day of their lives and how they can't wait to get to Guardian Academy, but you know what's stupid? They literally don't even actually get to the academy until like the last 10 seconds of the episode. Yeah, the whole first episode is kind of filler. Also, this first episode looks like it belongs in a lower quality internet cartoon series, not a major production. It seems to me that the animation was one of the most heavily criticized parts of this series, but don't you worry. We'll talk more about that a bit later. Anyways, the two set off saying goodbye to their moms and dads, or actually Rosemary says bye to her two dads. Uh, look, nothing against pushing LGBTQ ideals in your cartoon, but let me tell you, it feels like they were shoving it down your throat sometimes. Mom is proud of you. You protected a precious creature, and that let it find its perfect partner. And that matters so much. Right, I get it! I'm not even joking. Apparently, it's a joke amongst critics of the show on how many of the characters are gay or lesbian or bi. Yeah, so after some really bad lip syncing, Hello to the rest of our lives. we get a subpar at best theme song. And wow, I'm pretty sure the music I heard was not the original music so that the video wouldn't get copyrighted. And when I looked up the actual music for the theme song, I instantly recognized that I was right. So this wasn't the original music. Yeah, so maybe it's just, well actually no, because the original music is just as bad, if not worse, than this like instrumental thing they put in the place of it. All of my dreams will soon come true if we only try. All of our hopes come shining through. Just look into my eyes. So, anyways, in this next scene where they are boarding the carriage to go to the city of Lingarth, the animators clearly forgot what consistency is, as the characters and carriage frequently change in size from shot to shot. Like seriously. It's as bad as this one scene from DBZ when King Cold was all of a sudden Godzilla compared to Frieza, but instead of just one shot, it's the whole scene. It 
it's at this point in the video that I want to point out the fact that practically every background character just stands still. And it's painfully obvious. Stay perfectly still. This reeks of laziness on the part of the team, and I mean seriously. You guys had two extra years to flesh all this stuff out. Just upsetting to say the least. Pathetic. Another thing here is the fact that Sage and Rosemary are a couple, right? They hold hands, want to sit in each other's laps, lean on each other's shoulders, even sleep in the same bed later in the episode. Just stuff that a couple would do, right? Wrong. In my little research on the show, apparently they both have male romantic interests later on and only end up becoming a couple after those relationships don't work out. So why were they acting like this towards each other if they're just friends? Kind of a nitpick, but you know what's not? The dialogue in this show or at least in this episode, but I'm assuming that it doesn't get any better from here. Oh man! Oh god! Oh man! Oh god! Oh man! Oh god! Oh man! Oh god! Oh man! Let me take a quick break from reviewing to compile a short montage of absolutely atrocious dialogue in just this episode alone. Rosie, your mom helps to right wrongs. Plus, she gets to lug around that humongous sword. Hmm. And mom always comes home. Do you see them yet? Cousin and niece. Ooh. Did you make all this? We could have helped. Nobody touches my kitchen. Danger is like a flock of birds. It swoops all into your business when you least expect it. Aha! <laughs> uh, sorry, sorry. Didn't expect I'm anyone so here. I'm so sorry might want to watch where you swing that thing because of how it's a giant sword. It's not a giant sword. She's just shorter than you. Well, isn't this kind of thing small potatoes for a blacksmith? There are no small potatoes, only large mouths. I'm going to explode. You're not going to explode. Well, what would you do if I did? I put you back together. <laughs> you say that so confidently. Yep. I'm going to be so great at magic that I'll be able to wave one hand and make you whole again. Anyways, back to the review, I'm pretty sure new magic is an allegory for drugs or something along those lines, cause in this scene, well, just watch for yourself. Uh, I've never been around new magic before. My parents never let me try it. Can I hold your Terrasphere? Go ahead. This I'm Captain Lou Albano talking about drugs. Kids, don't be afraid to say no. Anyone that asks you to use drugs is not your friend. Drugs can and will kill. Remember, don't be afraid to turn to your priest, your rabbi, your minister, your moms, your dads, your teachers, because drugs can kill. And if you do drugs, you go to hell before you die. Please. So, while the two are sleeping, Rosemary has a cliched bad dream with some pathetic dialogue and some laughable animation. Mom! Hey, what's going on? Mommy, Whoa. Whoa. No! If I went into depth into every noticeable mistake in this episode, this review would probably be over an hour, so just take my word for it when I tell you that this was just a horrendous scene. Skipping over the menial breakfast scene, Sage and Rosemary explore the town for the first time. There's this cutaway shot of this small creature stealing Rosemary's important family locket, but it's so poorly edited that I genuinely had to rewind like three times just to understand what the heck I just saw. After some more ear bleeding dialogue, Rosemary notices her locket is missing and they go to find the creature responsible. Just have to say really quick that the animation in this one shot is pitiful. Like look at the awkward relationship between the camera movement and the completely unrealistic movement of the characters. Not to mention that literally all of the background characters don't move at all. 
I'm here to tell you right now, we don't care. Let me tell, all right, let me tell you, <laughs> we don't care. Yep. This creature named Atrixie runs away and leads Rosemary and Sage to a garden. They watch as the Trixie uses the locket as part of this ritual to call a mate. The Trixie and its mate fly around and break Rosemary's locket before she scares them off. In order to fix her locket, Rosemary and Sage go to a blacksmith who also happens to be going to the same school that they will be attending. Just pointing out a small plot hole here, Sage leads Rosemary to the blacksmith like she's been there before, but this is literally just her first day here, so she shouldn't have known about this place, but with how awful the writing of the dialogue in this show is, I wouldn't doubt that the writing of the plot was treated with similar negligence. Anyways, Parsley, I think that's how you say it. I don't know how to say your name properly since it was only said this one hard to hear time, but yeah, Parsley agrees to fix the locket and return it to Rosemary when they both go to school tomorrow. Let me quickly point out the fact that Parsley's brothers look like they just want to kill themselves for absolutely no reason, but also let me point out the fact that they have no reason to be here right now. There is no clever introduction to them whatsoever. They literally just show up so that she can talk about her brothers but they literally don't have a reason to be there, which is just a telltale sign of bad writing. But that's a staple of this show at this point. Also, there's this really cringy scene with some awkward dialogue that I can't describe. You just have to see it. Oh, oh no. my gosh. It's okay. It's armor. It's built to withstand a nuisance. We're really sorry. We had a run-in with a Trixie, and we're just a little rattled. Hold on. You got mugged on your first day? I'm sorry. Is there a better time to get mugged? That's right. Keep walking. <sighs> you almost chop off a person's head one time, and it's like... Mm. I was sure I was going to have to fight her to defend your honor. <laughs> My hero. You go to hell. So after their adventures for the day, Sage and Rosemary return to Sage's cousin's house and tell them about the Trixie incident. Somehow, niece or cousin, I don't really know which is which. I don't think they made that very clear in this episode, and even if they did, I do not care enough to look it up. Anyways, this one tells the two that they were guardians in a way by protecting the Trixie and <laughs> letting it find its perfect mate. <laughs> Definitely no forced LGBTQ themes here. But besides that, was she or he or they, I don't know, would, was Cousin even listening? How did Rosemary and Sage protect the Trixie? They were trying to get it. They didn't do anything to protect it at all. And Sage even calls her out on this. I wouldn't say protected exactly. It was more that we didn't cut it in half with swords. Hmm, sweetie, it's a start. What? What the fuck? It literally makes no sense. The writers made a horrible mistake. This is a mistake, a terrible mistake. And instead of just changing it, they left it in and just acknowledged it? Like what? <laughs> okay, thankfully the episode ends a minute later with the two finally going to school the next day. So now I'm going to talk about some overarching problems with the series, or at least the first episode, but from the reviews I've seen, I'm pretty sure that these problems continue throughout High Guardian Spice. First off, let's get rid of the obvious one. The dialogue can be egregiously bad at some times. I heard that thieves broke into the Arcane University, the Imperial Legion compound, and the temple all on the same night. Wait a minute, let me do that one again. I heard the thieves- Everything from the voice actors to the things actually being said, it just doesn't feel like a well-written show. I already harped on this a lot during the episode review, so I won't go into too much more depth here, 
But what I'm trying to say is the writing is bad, straight up. There are moments of competence, but usually the dialogue ranges from good enough to just plain stupid. Well, maybe it is stupid, but it's also dumb. Next up is the animation. When I first saw picture stills of this anime and thumbnails of videos and stuff like that, I thought to myself, huh, it looks like a bright and colorful cartoon, solid character designs, maybe the animation will look good. Yeah, no, firstly, the reason people harp on it so much is because it's supposed to be an anime. Come on, look at this. It looks like it's straight out of a Cartoon Network or Disney Channel show. Heck, I even thought that it felt like a worse version of the Owl House. But I can see why people are upset. This animation style isn't nearly as detailed as a lot of animes are expected to be. And that's just the cherry on top of the clear disregard for trying. A few examples of the laziness of the animators are different sizes from shot to shot, more than half the background characters literally not moving at all, and awkward movements from the characters. Someone described this as the characters appearing to slide across the screen instead of actually walking, and yeah, I noticed some examples of that. Next up is a point that I told you guys to remember earlier. This show is apparently not suitable for kids. What the what? There was literally nothing in this entire episode that would suggest that. I'm not lying one bit when I tell you that this episode could air on Cartoon Network or Disney Channel with absolutely no changes and it would be one of the tamest things on the network. Either this warning was somehow mistakenly put up here which wouldn't surprise me with all the other blunders of this show, but more likely is that there is material not suitable for children that comes later. So I ask, what demographic are you trying to appeal to? You can't expect adults to watch through several episodes of kid-friendly content before finally being introduced to some mature themes, and you can't expect kids to watch this show and then stop when it all of a sudden turns into a bloodbath of gore and a sailor convention of cussing. If this show is trying to go for that teenage demographic like the original Teen Titans or regular show or Infinity Train, then it needs to give its audience some of that mature but not completely adult content. I can't just expect adults to stay tuned to a show that is tonally similar with the Mickey Mouse Clubhouse, just because it's an anime. What's an anime? We have much to discuss. Finally, one of the biggest criticisms I've seen for this show is it's a blatant LGBTQ plus agenda. Is it wrong for the team behind High Guardian Spice to include material that supports the LGBTQ community? No, it's not wrong, but when you oversaturate your agenda to the point of practically every single character being a woman of a different race that isn't heterosexual, then your audience is going to start to complain. You can't sacrifice the quality of your content just to send a message. It's fine to have those themes just don't beat people over the head with it, because they will absolutely call you out in the most aggressive way. Anyways, what did I think of the first episode? It's bad, no doubt about it, but I think it's not quite as bad as the current reviews are saying. It's not the worst thing to come out of the 21st century, but I do think that's held to a significantly higher standard because it's considered an anime. And so when the end product is a bad Disney Channel show, people are going to be furious. It's okay, I'm not mad. Really? Nope. I'm serious! Also, this show was pushed back for two years. Two years! That's a very long time to fix all of these issues. And yet, here we are. Not a great way to start off your journey into producing original series, Crunchyroll. 
If you guys liked this review, then please leave a like and consider subscribing. If there's enough demand for another episode review of episode 2, I'll consider it, but one bad episode is more than enough for me. Also, I'm thinking about doing a reaction series, so if you guys have any good suggestions for videos that I should react to, then leave those in the comments. That's all for today, I'll see you guys all in the next one. Have a great day.